Hey there, Cancer. Welcome to your reading for July 2019. Thank you so much for tuning in. A very, very happy birthday to all you Cancers out there. We are currently in Cancer season as far as Western astrology goes. In Eastern astrology, technically, we're still in Gemini season, as at least as of the moment that I'm recording this reading, and that's the 25th of June. But anyway, very, very happy birthday to you guys, to you Cancers out there. I hope you're having a great day birthday season yes so check it out guys this is a general reading so please take what resonates and leave what doesn't if you'd like a look into your own personal situation please go ahead and email me all the information is in the description box below yes so here we go i'm not gonna i'm just keeping it short and cute um doing it the same way that i have been a golden universal for the tarot and then oracle guidance from the sacred rebels i'm doing this one again because it worked really well for june yeah Let's just get straight into it. I have a bit of a pre-shuffle here for you, Cancer. Uh, in your pre-shuffle, you have Judgment, the Two of Pentacles, and then also the, the Wheel of Fortune popped out. Now, a little bit about the Wheel of Fortune. I had used this deck um, at, like a, at an event that I did a few, a few nights ago, and the Wheel of Fortune was actually face up, but it showed itself while I was doing this pre-shuffle and so I took it because it did feel like it actually it did really feel like it was relevant also though underneath the deck you do have the five of swords now I want to get a little bit of aha uh -huh, four of swords is underneath the five of swords okay what does this mean well it seems either for some of you you're in a process of awakening with judgment here um you're going through an awakening process um which to, to be quite honest is an an, an ever flowing thing when it comes to existence in life we'll just say and i'm when i say existence i mean more than just the three-dimensional human lives that we know here in this time space continuum or in this reality um, existence is vast existence encompasses all different life forms, all different beings, all different star systems, all different galaxies, however you want to see it. When I say existence, I mean the vastness that is existence, right? Um, and so the awakening process is always going on. Whether you're consciously aware of it or not, you were always on a path towards enlightenment or awakening. Even if, I don't know why I'm getting this, but like even if you are, obviously, I don't think they would, well, let me just say what I'm picking up on. Even if you are, say, a being that is caught or trapped in darkness and like has forsaken source and blah, 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 and is just manipulating people or beings to siphon their energy, blah, blah, it's all still part of the awakening process, okay? So some of you are on this awakening, in this, ah, there you go, conscious awakening, okay? You, uh, it, it, for some of you, this is becoming your awakening process or your, uh, your awakening, your enlightenment, their ascension here that you are going through is becoming conscious for some of you. And so now you're in this process of teetering back and forth, trying to bring balance into your life. For some of you, you might actually be um, keeping that balance quite solid in the face of some sort of opposition. Five of Swords, um, jealousy, rage, uh, one-upmanship, pettiness, shit starter energy, that's the Five of Swords. That would be um, your friends and family or coworkers or people that are just around you becoming aware of your change in vibration and not having too good of a time dealing with it. So they are, they are taking action to try and tear you down, to try and pick a fight with you, to lower your vibration, to keep them where you are very much a misery loves company type of situation. Not saying that they are particularly conscious of this, not saying that they're particularly doing it on purpose, but yet I do feel like there are some people that are getting triggered around you that is kind of causing this shit starter energy, okay? Whether they're conscious of it or not. Then you also have the Wheel of Fortune. Uh, the Wheel of Fortune talking about time, yes, uh, about the wheel turning, cycles moving, um, time moves on. It's literally only a matter of time before you have a greater understanding or a greater balance here in your situation, okay? Now, for others of you um, that are not necessarily becoming conscious of the awakening process or the ascension process because you've been on it for some time you've been conscious of it for a while there is a part of your path that you are needing to come to terms with 
I'm hearing teeter tottering. You're going back. Some of you may be going back and forth between accepting this and moving forward with it, like surrendering to it and like, and um, kind of closing yourself off to that. I kind of understand where you would be. I'm kind of feeling some of that energy in this uh, today, in this day um, that I'm that I'm recording this now for you. I totally understand. Um, and that would be where this five of swords energy would be coming up in your life. Um, I feel like you might be acting in some destructive ways, um, trying to keep it from moving forward, uh, resistance. You are, there could be some active, this is, and this isn't just like resistance in the form of, uh, of like, you know, there's a blockage that you're needing to work through. No, this is like putting resistance into it for the sake of putting resistance into it. It's petty. Um, that's kind of what it feels like. But then, thankfully though, underneath the Five of Swords here, you do have the Four of Swords. So it's really just a matter of surrendering for both sides of the equation that I'm picking up on in this pre-shuffle here. Surrendering to the process and just allowing things to be and keeping yourself balanced. Just maintaining your own sense of well-being and your own sense of balance in this situation in order to allow the process that is has basically been chosen you chose this before you came here all right now i understand how you know when we chose when we choose uh, the the trajectory of our lives or the things that we're looking to experience and express before we physically incarnate here yes there are many things that we're aware of that could go wrong in that place in that in that frame of consciousness we're 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 completely aware we know it all well we kind of know it all we understand it all um well or not that shoot what am i trying to say here uh, it's a different perspective but then of course once we get down here and things start happening and shit starts hitting the fan you know that emotions come into play and our our personal um our personalities come into play and then we have to you know actively engage with all of the elements that we chose you know under these circumstances completely um, and consciously in order to learn the things that we want to learn and experience and, in, and grow in ways that we want to grow um, So I understand why, you know, if at this moment in time on your journey, you're feeling pretty petty, pretty resistant potentially because of some of the things that may have happened along the journey in the past, but just go with it. Just go with the flow. The universe is actively asking you to surrender here. Okay. Um, and the wheel of fortune is giving me a, 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 basically what the wheel of fortune is kind of saying to me right now is like, look, dude, just let it play out. You don't know what's gonna happen here because you're only seeing it from your limited point of view. And we don't say that to say to, to, to in, a, in a derogatory way or to, um, to actively trigger you, although if we are triggering you, take that as it resonates. Triggers are a good thing. Many of you, many of you have learned that by now. Um, but your limited point of view is your three-dimensional human point of view, okay? You don't see it from where we see it, which is up here in higher realms, higher dimensions, not in the limited three-dimensional view. So, so take it as it resonates, you know? Just we're asking you to surrender. We're asking you to just go with the flow because you really have no idea what's going on outside of you. You may be able to pick up on things. You may be feeling certain things, but you're actively putting some sort of resistance into this and it's really not helping you. <laughs> that was a complete channeled message and I might as well be talking to myself right now, but maybe I am. Who knows? Anyway, there's another card that came out here, King of Cups. And this is for whoever resonates with, take it as it resonates. But the first thing that I heard when this King of Cups came out was, he loves you. And he, in this sense, is the masculine energy. Not a man, not a woman, but a masculine energy. That's what I heard. He loves you, period. That's all you need. And then also, yes, the Three of Swords is down here. But, you know, and even if, okay, that's great. Maybe you just needed to hear that. Maybe you just needed to hear that in order to, like, put yourself at ease. Th that is not a message that's coming through, Queen. Oh, damn. All right. The Queen of Swords just came out. That is not a message to say, oh, well, OK, well, he loves you. So, you know, I guess you better start making preparations to accept him back into your life now. No. But 
regardless of what may have happened between you and if this if we are talking about a romantic relationship i do channel the venus sign here which is love but my my readings here are not all about um love they're just general messages for your life um, and if we are talking about a romantic relationship here you need to know that this individual loves you they actually do love you there's that three of swords again regardless of what regardless of what may have happened between the two of you. But then that Queen of Swords is saying, okay, that's great. You may love me and all, but uh, quite frankly, that don't mean shit. <laughs> it really doesn't mean shit until you take action, until you prove it, until you start to speak for yourself and allow, instead of allowing spirit, source, or your guides to speak for you. And no, telepathy doesn't count at least not in this physical existence, not where we are right now, telepathy does not count. Even though it is valid, yes, I, absolutely. It is absolutely valid, it's 100% real. We all have the ability to, to express it and experience it. But in this physical three-dimensional experience, you need, so I, I, even your words, even your words only go so far. If you really want somebody to trust you, if you really want someone to believe that you've changed, you have to speak the walk, speak the speak, and then walk the talk. You gotta speak the talk, and then you gotta walk the talk. You have to speak it, yes. You have to own up to it. You have to be honest about it. But then you have to follow through with it. And that's what the Queen of Swords is saying. So even with that message of this person loves you, yes, they may do that. That may be well and good. But still, Queen of Swords, that bitch, and be like, look, until you make some sort of solid effort, until you actually show me that your words mean something to you and you're not just saying them to, to manipulate, I can't help you. Okie dokie. So let's get into it. Yeah? Let's see what we've got for my cancers. For July 2019. And for those of you that are new to my channel that are, are confused as to why I may, may be saying that, you know, I might as well be talking to myself right now. In Eastern astrology, my moon is in cancer. And I tend to, I resonate more with my Eastern chart than my Western. But whatever. That's all personal. Oh, and I guess I should say, I have put the information back down in the description box. If you would like to look, I did take that out for a while because there was just too much stuff in there. But if you would like to look it up. Um, you know, and compare your Western signs with your Eastern signs and maybe, you know, compare the readings and see which ones resonate the most with you, I highly recommend that you do that. I did put that back down in the description box for you guys, okay? Here we go. Hi, spirit. Please make me a clear channel for all Cancerians, sun, moon, rising, and Venus. Please bring forward the best messages to serve the highest good of all involved for July 2019. Thank you so much, Spirit. All right, guys, we're giving this three shuffles, and then we'll see what we've got for you. For my Cancerians, Sun, Moon, Rising, and Venus. For my Cancers, for July 2019. I hope everybody had a good summer solstice. It started it out as a kind of a cloudy day here, but then it actually turned out into a really, really nice day, so I was very pleased. All right, here we go. For my Cancerians. Boop. All right, overall energy. We're starting you off with the Ace of Pentacles. This is a good thing, okay? A brand new start. Now, that actually does fall <coughs> right in line with the, uh, the, the, the pre-shuffle cards that we had, which were Judgment, Two of Pentacles, um, and the Wheel of Fortune, also with the Five of Swords. But the Two of Pentacles obviously comes after the Ace of Pentacles. But here you are, here you are, Cancer, being potentially being offered a brand new start. This could be a brand new business venture. Okay, like I'll give you an example. Um, I finished school in July. My last day of school was the third is the third of July. 
and depending on when you watch this, was the 3rd of July <laughs> of this year. So I will be moving forward and you know working on building a business around what I have been learning in this course over the last year and a half. So, this, I, so I'm definitely hearing a new business opportunity, a new business venture, but for the most part, this is really, really just a brand new start in the physical world, in the physical realm. Now, if you are one of those people that are becoming conscious of um, the ascension process and your own personal awakening, absolutely you have a brand new start a brand new opportunity at life at expression at um, experiencing the world is in fact being handed to you by the divine in terms of you now becoming conscious of your awakening process okay which is a beautiful beautiful thing underneath the ace of pentacles you do have the seven of wands now this could be a good thing it all well uh, it, Technically, all around, it is a good thing. It just depends on how far you take it. Are you just, are you going to defend yourself? Just to defend yourself, to set healthy boundaries and just make sure that you are whole, safe, and protected? Or are you going to defend yourself so, so vigorously that you're actually causing more drama, more turmoil, more karma, more tension, more resistance in the situation? That Five of Swords energy we were talking about, right? Ooh, underneath the seven of wands is the four of wands. And underneath the four of wands, <laughs> figures, you've got the four of cups. Okay, let's talk about it. So the four of wands is a beautiful card. The four of wands can often talk about marriage, commitment, stability, solid foundations. Um, the main theme of the four of wands is um, a checkpoint, kind of like, a, it's kind of a checkpoint in terms of, because I do see the seven of pentacles as more of, as a, as a, of an official checkpoint, but here this could be, a, this is kind of like a checkpoint energy because at this point you have laid a solid foundation and there is definitely cause for celebration here. Now, the thing about that is don't rest on your laurels or don't party too much because the work is not done. You still have work, still, you still have work to do moving forward. But right now there is some sort of cause for celebration. The Four of Wands can also talk about union. If you resonate with the Twin Flame journey, the Four of Wands is a union card. So for those of you that are um, going through this awakening process and you're becoming conscious of it, here you go. You have a solid foundation. This is why you are now able to, to start consciously awakening, start to consciously see and perceive and experience the things around you and your 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 shift in perception because you have a solid enough foundation in um i guess you could say your spiritual practice your psychic abilities your extrasensory abilities your your multi-dimensional nature you have a much more solid footing there and so therefore you're able to consciously see things now for some of you creating a sense of boredom with this four of cups the more you see <laughs> wow the more you see the less you identify with that is actually a very very good thing because in that case you are or in that sense you're able to clear away all the things that no longer resonate with you so that you can create space for that which does resonate with you all right for others of you This is resistance that you're injecting into the situation because of some sort of unrequited love. Whether it now in the present or whether in the past. For some of you, this could be from the past. For others of you, this is more recent. Okay. Now we're talking about, we're talking about a journey that you're needing to surrender to for this group. So you may have come to a point where you have a solid foundation within yourself. You've been doing a lot of hard work on yourself, grounding yourself, you know, healing yourself, working on becoming whole. And you may have started to learn about setting those healthy boundaries, but you're still kind of learning about that because I feel like some of you may be pushing the envelope a little too far 
because of the pain and the rejection and the unrequited love you may have experienced in the past. Okay. All right. So let's get into the rest of this here. First set of surrounding energies. Now you can look at this as the first half, second half of the month or the first half, second half of your reading. However, whatever resonates with you, go for it. I recommend that you just look at it as the first and second half of the reading because time is an illusion and energies are fluid and all of this is just intertwined anyway, but you do what, what resonates best for you, okay? First set of surrounding energies in the first half of your reading, Cancer, we have the Seven of Swords. Deception, lies, cheating, backstabbing. Or, or, uh... I'm hearing trying to get away with something, okay? But that doesn't, that's not necessarily how I want to put it. That's how I'm hearing it, so that's how I'm going to convey it. But trying to get away with something. Trying to get away from something. Trying to slip out of some sort of situation without being seen, um, in possibly in order to keep from creating more drama. Maybe trying to get away with something. This could be you, Cancer, or this could be somebody else. Trying to get out of something without having to take any sort of responsibility for it. It also could be a level of detachment. Just completely being in a, it detached. The Seven of Swords can represent the moon so having a placement, uh, having a moon placement in Aquarius, which makes someone very detached mentally, um, or at least can lead to someone being very detached mental mentally, which isn't necessarily a bad thing, you know? Um, it just depends on how you use it. Seven of Swords is coupled with the Nine of Wands. Okay, so this definitely is an energy of being battered and bruised, being on guard with this Nine of Wands, having dealt with a lot of deception, cheating, lies, backstabbing. You may have been the, the person to actually do this at some point in your life. Um, but I'm, what I'm picking up there is that it's only really been in response to how that may have been, how you may have been treated like that in the past. Um, having just learned that that's just how things are done, even though it didn't necessarily feel right to you. Um, but this is just, this is, this is why there are such hard boundaries being put up right now, because you, or maybe the person that you're dealing with, if you're a cross watcher for a Cancerian, has dealt with a shit ton of destruction, a shit ton of deception, backstabbing, cheating, lying, um, all of that stuff. And it's got you worn out. Second set of surrounding energies in the first half of your reading here, Cancer, you have the King of Wands. A Leo energy, potentially maybe another fire sign, Aries or Sagittarius. This feels like an individual, a narcissistic individual, someone who's just really self-centered. Um, this could have been the type of energy that you have dealt with in the past. Now, at the same time, though, this does kind of feel like your own self-confidence, Cancer. Pride and ego, arrogance, sure. That could be the energy that is having you or influencing you towards really closing off to something that the universe is asking you to open up to and surrender to. But then again, this King of Wands could also be that individual, the, the, the toxic, narcissistic individual that would just take and take and take from you, probably gaslit you. Um, was very self-centered. Maybe still is, potentially. Who knows? Uh, King of Wands is coupled with... Ha! Huh, the fool. Excellent. So this is mostly your energy, Cancer. This is you taking your power back, standing in your own pride and your own self-belief and taking a leap of faith, moving in a new direction. Now, now, this also could be you declaring, Cancer, that you don't need anybody's help, you don't even need help from the divine, and you're just going to move on and you can do this all on your own. Okay. I know what that feels like, Cancer. So I'm not passing judgment on you. What I'm saying is you don't have to do it alone. It's going to be much easier if you allow the divine and you allow the universe to help you and if you really just surrender. Now, 
you also need to have faith and belief in yourself. But if you're going to have faith and belief in yourself, you need to understand that that having faith and belief in yourself is also having faith and belief in the universe. You are not se you can never be separated from the universe. You are part of the universe. You can never be separated from God. You are part of God. Everything is God. Everything is the universe. And so thus you are everything. You can never be separated from it. So the more you try to say, you try to reject or put resistance into or not surrender into the path that you've technically already chosen, the harder it's going to be. And if it's already difficult, why would you want to make it any dif more difficult for yourself? Yeah? I'm literally talking to myself right now too, guys, so please don't feel bad. <laughs> literally. Your challenge in the first half of your reading here, you have the, wow, look at that, the Ten of Wands. Why would you want to make this any harder for yourself? The Ten of Wands is about being overburdened. It's about carrying things that really are no longer serving, serving you. For most of you, this is uh, memories, circumstances from the past that you've just been that have just been piling up and piling up. And instead of just like releasing yourself from them, freeing yourself from them, just carrying them almost as some sort of trophy. But all it's doing is bogging you down. Ten of Wands is coupled with the Two of Swords. You're refusing to let these things go, Cancer. Um, in Eastern astrology, there are the 12 zodiac signs, and then there are also 27, I believe, 27 nakshatras that are right outside the, the zodiac, which gives more definition to the 12 individual zodiac signs. One of those nakshatras within Cancer is Ashlesha. I believe I'm saying that correctly. Um, in Eastern astrology, my moon is in Cancer. My moon is at 29 degrees Cancer, which means that it's the very last degree of Cancer, which means that it falls within this Ashlesha nakshatra. Ashlesha, I believe I'm saying that correctly. Yes, I am, okay. Is the nakshatra of the serpent or the Naga, which are the like almost like mermaids, but not snakes. So like they have a snake abdomen, but then a human, often female as they're depicted. Um, I'm pretty sure, yes, they can be male too, but the Naga are often seen as fit female, I think. I don't know much about that species of being specifically. I just know that often, whenever I've seen depictions of them, they've been feminine or female in nature, in, in, in autonomy. Anyway, the serpent is where, or the Ashlesha Nakshatra is where Cancerians kind of get that clingy energy from. That almost boa constrictor energy, like wrapping on and holding on, like, you know, kind of constricting or suffocating energy. And that's what I feel like you're doing here, Cancer, with the Ten of Wands and the Two of Swords. Not only are you carrying around all these burdens needlessly, but you're refusing to look at this any, any sort of way to let this go. And I know why you're doing that. I can feel it. Because... For some, because some of you out there feel like if you let this go, then then whoever these people are or these circumstances or whatever, whoever these people are, we'll say it that way, whoever these people are that have hurt you, done wrong by you, whatnot, whatever, whether it actually has happened in the way that you're saying it has or if that's just your perception, not passing judgment, I'm just trying to be as diplomatic as possible here. It's as if, if you were to let go of these things, somehow these people are off the hook. But what you're forgetting is that the laws of the universe are exempt, no one is exempt from the laws of the universe. And you really have no control over the repercussions that somebody else experiences in their life because of their actions, whether their actions have, have hurt you or not, whether their actions have influenced you in any way, good or bad, or not. That is just literally has nothing to do with you. It is none of your business. So you are only hurting yourself more by refusing to let go. And only making your journey that much more difficult. The universe is asking you to surrender, Cancer. Okay? Closing message or potential outcome in the first half of your reading here you have. Judgment. The universe is asking you to surrender. Now, here's the other thing about judgment. 
It is a res resurrection. It is a redemption card. Okay, the judgment card is much is a lot like justice. The justice card of the major arcana, which this is also major arcana judgment. This is the second to last card of major arcana in judgment. Uh, uh, yes, uh, judgment is. Now, judgment is a lot like justice in the sense that balance is going to be brought to the situation. Now, this is not human or three-dimensional type of balance. This is overall spiritual, universal law balance, that type of situation. But the beauty of judgment here is now there's redemption. Not only is there balance, but there's also cleansing, healing, purification, and you could almost look at this as like a reset button. Almost. Because you're still going to have to come to terms with things. You're still going to have to atone for things. You're still going to have to, you know, like that. But, but now there's a purification that comes with it. So spirit is really, shit guys. <laughs> spirit is really asking you to surrender because ultimately there is refreshment. There is purification there is a, a, a second chance almost another chance we'll say in this relationship in this situation you just have to surrender to it and allow the universe to do what it's been trying to do all along okay judgment is coupled with the four of swords Spirit is asking you, the universe is asking you to surrender. Yes, hold your boundaries. Because yes, Cancer, you have learned a lot in this process. You have built a very solid foundation for yourself. And this is not just a three-dimensional, um, material, superficial foundation. No, this is internal, spiritual foundation with this Four of Wands here. Yes. Maintain the boundaries that you have learned to put in place to maintain your own well-being, your own happiness, your own safety. But don't overdo it, Cancer. There's no reason to be malicious. There's no reason to be cutthroat. There's no reason to lash out to hurt somebody else or at, at least make someone get even just a taste of the pain that you're going through. No. That is not your place to... It is not your place to dole any of that out. That is the universe's job. And trust me, they will handle it. <laughs> you do not have to worry about that, okay? Okay, getting into the second half of your reading here. This is kind of long. We're already 30 minutes in. Damn. Sorry, guys. This is a long video. Apparently, I have a lot to say. <laughs> okay. Uh, second half of your reading here, first set of surrounding energies. You've got, yeah, the five of pentacles. You are putting yourself out in the cold, Cancer, by you saying things like, whatever, fuck this, I can do this on my own. I don't even need help from the universe or the divine. I can do this by myself. Thanks. I don't want your information anymore. I don't want your guidance anymore. Oh, thank you very much. You, Cancer, are putting yourself out in the cold here. Okay. Good God. I was literally, I'm, I was literally going through this today. So it's really funny that this is coming out now. Neil. <laughs> Five of Pentacles is coupled with the Eight of Cups. Good God. Um, By putting yourself out in the cold like this, you're actually putting, you're actually walking away from your own self. But also what this is saying is instead of putting, instead of reinforcing some sort of rejection by cutting, by trying to, by trying to cut yourself off from the divine's guidance and assistance, just walk away. Walk away from the pain, the hurt. Just, just walk away from it. Leave it behind you. And move forward. Move forward on your journey. And, just, and, and look, just because you're, you're potentially walking away from these eight neatly stacked cups doesn't mean you can't come back. 
doesn't mean you won't come back. I know. I hear you right now. That is impossible. I am never coming back. I am never. Not. You say that now, Cancer. I, don't shoot the messenger, honey. But that's why spirit is asking you to please surrender. Just let go of it for a while. Just separate yourself. Move away. Detachment. That kind of thing, right? Second set of surrounding energies in the second half of your reading here, you've got the lovers. We could be talking twin flames. Many people do see this card as the twin, like the card of the twin flame relationship, the twin flame situation, the twin flame journey. This is also about a choice. And for some of you that are really going through some sort of awakening, you're almost, you're starting to, I feel like some of you are starting to question that whole proverb of, you know, or I don't know if it's, is it a proverb? I don't know. The whole saying of ignorance is bliss. And that could be why, uh, where is it? Is it here? No. Oh, it came out in the pre-shuffle. That's why, that's why some of you could be teeter-tottering with that two of pentacles energy that came out in the pre-shuffle. Is ignorance really bliss? God, can't I just go back to sleep? No. Sorry, you can't. <laughs> Doesn't work that way. Uh, the lovers is coupled with now the queen of wands. You have, damn, we really could be, oh shit. All right. Um, if you identify with this, we really could be talking about the twin flame journey because we have the lovers and then we also have the king and the queen of wands. And in my opinion, the king and the queen of wands represent the uh, divine masculine and divine feminine in the minor arcana the divine masculine and feminine of the twin flame dynamic. Now the masculine in the king of wands has the fool taking a leap of faith, starting over, moving in a new direction. The feminine has the lovers. And to me, that is the anchoring of the divine relationship. To me, this is saying that the feminine knows exactly what this is, knows exactly what this situation is. But that could be why some of you are having such a hard time with this right now. If we are talking about a twin flame relationship, or maybe if we're just talking about a, a strong divine union, a soulmate bond, whatever. Whatever is going, if we are talking about a romantic situation, particularly a twin flame situation, the feminine knows exactly what this is. And that could be why it is so damn frustrating for her and so hard for you if you are the feminine in this situation, and I'm not talking gender, I'm talking energy. It could be so hard. It could be why you are putting up such resistance here. Because you do, in fact, know. And some shit went down that really hurt. That really made you question any, everything I'm hearing. But then you also do have a choice here. Now, twin flame situation aside, romance aside, whatnot, whatever. You have a choice here. From the feminine side, you need to make that decision because the feminine is the internal and your external reality is a direct reflection of your internal reality. So in essence, you need to make a choice about where your heart's desire truly lies and embody that. And from your feminine aspect, allow yourself to manifest that. From your masculine aspect, with the king of wands, taking a leap of faith. In that new direction, that you have chosen and are anchoring with your feminine aspect. Now, if we're talking twin flames, you've got to make a decision, feminine. <laughs> your challenge in the second half of your reading here. There's that five of swords again. But honestly, Cancer, I feel like you are most of the source of this energy. I know that's hard to hear. And I'm not trying to say, this is not the type of situation in which, you know, someone is starting shit just to fuck with people, just to start some shit. No, it's happening because of your own defense mechanisms. Like 
some of y'all are really going hard with these boundaries right now. And that's not a bad thing until you start really being destructive about it. Needlessly asserting yourself, whether that's physically or even energetically. Standing your ground is one thing, but charging forward with those boundaries, I guess to show somebody something, to teach somebody a lesson, maybe to inflict, you say, like, yeah, yeah, you wanna see what this feels like? All right, sure, I'll show you. That's the five of swords. And you're coming from a place of hurt, Cancer, I get it. But there's no reason to put out more hurt. It's only gonna keep the cycle going. Wheel of Fortune. Are you perpetuating a cycle of pain? We don't want to do that, guys. I promise you, we don't want to do that. Five of Swords is coupled with, ooh, the Seven of Pentacles. Here is that checkpoint. It's time to check yourself before you wreck yourself, Cancer. Again, it's one thing to stand your ground and hold your boundaries. It's another thing to go on a crusade with those boundaries. There it is, a crusade with those boundaries. Closing message or potential outcome in the second half of your reading here, Cancer. You've got the Ace of Swords. I like that. Truth, knowledge, honesty, integrity, aha. But you see, some of you are using just, this is that crusade energy. I'm surprised the Knight of Swords didn't come out. It might in the last card. We still have one card left, but I doubt it. But this is kind of what it, it, it well, see, no, though. I could be speaking too soon because, again, we do still have one card left. But this does kind of feel like a Knight of Swords energy in the sense of charging forward, leaping into battle. But to me, that Knight of Swords energy would be an unprovoked situation. Here for you, I do feel like you're using this sword to cut people down, but that's where the boundaries are getting uh, overused, overworked, overstretched. This would be that crusade with this, this these, these boundaries. Um, my laptop is freaking out right now. I don't know if you guys can see this, but it's really freaking weird. Hold on a second. I'm sorry, you guys. I don't know what just happened, but like my screen was like flipping. It was being really weird, and I didn't know if it was being recorded or not, so I stopped it. But whatever, we're back to it. Um, don't I? You you have you understand a lot. You have a lot of knowledge in this situation, or you've learned a lot. You've grown a lot. You you you've come to realize a lot of things. But don't use that against people. Also, don't use it against yourself. Okay. Because just like any, this sword is double-edged, okay? Ace of Swords is coupled with, oh, oh, it's not the Knight of Swords, it's the Knight of Wands. Whoa! A crusade, y'all. Because the Knight of Wands to me is a light worker energy when it's not wishy-washy and, and player-ish and whatever, but. The Knight of Wands with the Ace of Swords could very well be a crusade. But this also could be you driving forward with what you have learned, the truth and the knowledge that you've come to understand. This is your path as an awakened individual moving forward on your spiritual journey. But be careful with that sword, okay? Because you could end up just making things harder for yourself in the end. Okay, so now that we're like 40 minutes into this reading, let's get some oracle guidance for your month. All right, Cancer? For my Cancerians. One more shuffle here. All right. 
Form a Cancer, Sun, Moon, Rising, and Venus for the month of July 2019. Here we go. Okay. Card number 26. Relax the hold of darkness and be at cause. All righty. Ooh. Okay. <clears throat> Here we go, guys. Dear sacred rebel, this moment in your life requires great courage. Fortunately, you possess, you possess that in bucket loads. You are being asked to allow yourself to be lifted out of one level of known reality and into the next level of higher voltage reality. Higher voltage reality requires a more absolute trust and a heart that is surrendered into the greater heart of the universe so that life can happen to us, through us, and with us more quickly, more radically, more beautifully, and more boldly. You are now being invited into this new reality where things happen quickly and according to bold, loving optimism. This is a reality not only of potential, but of manifestation of the great big cosmic yes. To access this reality, you have to have, I'm sorry, you have to leap from known waters and others may think you are crazy from doing so. You have to leave behind the dark, weighty gap, I'm sorry, grip of hesitation, procrastination, second guessing, and the belief that you have to do everything on your own. Good God. You may fear for your life. How will you be safe in the wild electrical pulse of so much aliveness? How will you function without the hazy sleep induced paralysis of playing it safe, talking, I'm sorry, taking too long and placing lesser priorities above your sacred art of life? How will you hold yourself back if you didn't hold on to fear? You do not need to worry about such things. Life is wild, but it is also wise. It's a force of startling, raw awakening at times, but it is also a natural process of evolution where all things mature according to a, seasoned, a seasonal cycle in right timing. You are a part of, not apart from, that process. The invitation of shift gears and jump, I'm sorry, the, in, the invitation to shift gears and jump on board the express train of life will feel exhilarating and perhaps also challenging. When you are in the hold of darkness, you will feel pushed to turn away, to imagine it is all too much, and to create excuses about how your desires aren't grounded enough, that you are being too flighty or flaky, or that you are not living, quote, in the real world. Th that is fear talking, not truth. If the sacred rebel is not awakened, we will continue to live in a culture drenched in fear and distrust of nature. Those without awakened hearts don't yet understand what nature knows. She knows timing. She knows life and death. She knows the creative process. She just knows and can be trusted to support us, her own creations, in becoming all that we can become. Does this mean that we become passive and just flow along like a limp leaf detached from the tree and blown about randomly by the breeze? No, being free of the dark hold empowers us to take up our cause. This means being free to act and affirm the intuitive feelings we have by following up on them. This is painting like someone who has lost their mind, completely free and from the heart. It means writing, even though you have no conscious idea of what you're writing, even as the words are streaming forth upon the page before you, before your rather curious eyes. And it means speaking about your work, never hiding it away. Allow it to breathe the fresh air and be held in the gaze of another. Detach from the darkness they, that would say it is not enough or must be the best thing ever, whatever that means, in order to be worthy of a place in the world. Instead, just let it be what it is. It might fly, it might endure, and it might not. All of nature, including you and your passions and dreams, will be what is needed, when it is needed, and how it is needed, according to wisdom. We just have to trust in this within ourselves and within nature herself through the flow of life and participate. You are asked to go within and imagine diving deep off the edge of what you have known. There is so much more calling to you now. It is your time. Leap. <laughs> So there you have it, Cancer. Thank you so much for tuning in. I hope that was helpful for you. If you would like a look into your own personal situation, please don't hesitate to email me. All of the information is in the description box below. With that, I wish you guys a great 
fantastic, beautiful birthday month. Very happy to the July, to the June Cancers as well as the July Cancers. And I look forward to connecting with you again for our next reading for the month of August. Yes. Take care. Bye.